So close your eyes. It's afternoon. You want a nap. Anyways, close your eyes and think, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think about a breakthrough innovation? OK, open them. So perhaps you had an image of a dramatic discovery or some kind of a radical invention. But certainly what's true is that if you thought about a breakthrough innovation, you thought about something that changed the course of history and something that reshaped and redefined our world. Perhaps you thought about our friend Thomas Edison and the light bulb. Thank you, Mr. Edison, for illuminating the night, for making our home safer, and for allowing us to evolve from lamps and candles. And for, we're not sure if we're to thank you for this, allowing us 12 more hours of production and productivity. <laughs> Or perhaps you thought about the Wright brothers and the airplane. Thanks to the Wright brothers, we are no longer limited to moving at the speed of steam engines. They disrupted the transportation industry, and they made global travel and global trade and global connectivity possible. Now, all these inventions happened in the late 1800s, but fair not, we're still invented. Uh, you know, if you think about things that we're doing now to radically advance the world that we live in, you can think about the Human Genome Project that uh, was able to complete successfully their mission in 2003 uh, of sequencing 3 billion DNA-based pairs of the human genome. It's funny, when I think about these breakthrough innovations, what strikes me as most intriguing is not the innovation themselves, but to me, what's intriguing is the breakthrough interactions that underlie these innovations. What are those powerful creative collaborations? What are those unique partnerships? Who were those diverse teams that came together to make all these innovations possible? So the research clearly shows that diversity drives innovation. OK, so fine, Edison single-handedly created the light bulb. But let's be clear, it may have had maybe five to 10 parts. If you start to think about the airplane, this becomes a slightly more complex undertaking. Maybe it doesn't have more than 10 parts, but all the systems of aerodynamics, propulsion, and control that go into it become much more difficult for one person to successfully complete. And certainly, if you think about sequencing 3 billion DNA base pairs, that's not something you want to take on on your own. And in fact, the Human Genome Organization has upwards of 1,800 scientists working across 80 plus countries. So, you know, as problems become more complex, collaboration becomes more critical. And where do we have more complex problems than in the arena of social impact? Social impact problems are hairy, tricky challenges. And so what we would like to argue at Babson, and certainly I think we all agree, is that creating collaborative change makers is what we need to think about. I want to share with you a local example where we had the opportunity to see these breakthrough interactions at work in the social impact domain. So this was a accessibility challenge here in Boston for the visually impaired community. It was a project that was undertaken by the Perkins School for the Blind, who has as their mission to create a world that, has, that is inclusive and accessible for all the visually impaired. That's a multifaceted problem, and we're not going to solve it here today. Um, but what I'm going to share with you is just one small slice of that problem of accessibility for the visually impaired. So imagine you're 30 feet away from the bus stop, but you still miss the bus. Why? simply because you can't see it. As a sighted commuter, I can be 30 feet away from the bus stop, but I can still see it in the distance and run to catch it. As a visually impaired commuter, I am relying on traditional GPS systems to get me to the bus stop. Unfortunately, our traditional current GPS technology only allows us to navigate within a 30-foot radius of a precise destination, which leaves the visually impaired commuter some significant ways away from the bus stop. So the Boston um, Perkins School for the Blind partnered with the MBTA, the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority, and a company locally called Ray's Lab to develop what they called a micro-navigation solution. So this problem in the visually impaired community has been dubbed the last 30 feet of frustration. This idea that you can get so close to your target destination but no closer. <laughs> And so Boston, um, the Perkins School for the Blind partnered, as I said, with MBTA and Ray's Labs to come up with a way to enable 
visually impaired commuters to transition from our traditional GPS system into a unique GPS system that has micro-navigation technologies. So how do they do this? They instrumented, with the help of the MBTA, the bus stop systems with Bluetooth beacon technology. And once the visually impaired commuter is within Bluetooth radius of the bus stop, their phone switches over to the micro-navigation system and it takes them all the way directly to the bus stop with the Bluetooth technology. That's powerful. That's the power of the Internet of Things. That's the power of connected devices. Typically, we have been using the Internet to talk to each other. But now, as we've been hearing in the Internet of uh, IoT revolution, things can talk to each other and they can also talk to us. And so that's what the bus stop is doing. The bus stop is actually speaking to the visually impaired uh, commuter. So as, you know, as we uh, had the opportunity at Babson to learn from this uh, example, this case study, we saw as we thought about breakthrough interactions, two critical elements of breakthrough interactions that we think are significant in the social impact domain. This idea of cross-sector interactions and the idea of cross-disciplinary interactions. So let me allow me to continue with this example. So in the example of the... Um, IoT micro-navigation system for the bus stops, there were three partners. There was Perkins School for the Blind, who was a nonprofit partner. There was the MBTA, which was a public sector partner. And there was Ray's Lab, which is a private sector partner. Now, none of these people could have done this on their own. None of them had the financial, technical, social, reputational, infrastructural capital to make this happen. However, um, together, they were able to bring these resources to bear in a way that was complementary. So the Perkins School for the Blind had, as we know in social impact, most critically the social capital. They had a true access to that community. They also, interestingly and unexpectedly, had the financial capital. They won a grant of $750,000 from Google that uh, they won with respect to an uh, accessibility challenge. So that was actually the seed money that got this program off the ground. Because let's be fair, MBTA, we know you don't have the cash. Uh, <laughs> um, and then what MBTA did bring, however, was the infrastructural capital. You can wish all your life away that you want to make the bus system accessible, but if you don't have access to, that, to those bus systems, to those bus stops, you can't make it happen. So having MBTA on the ground as a partner was critical. It just so happened at the time that this program was underway, they already had their own accessibility project um, in progress, and they were already... Uh, reviewing all 8,000 of their regional bus stops and surveying them and, and upgrading the instrumentation um, in addition to the instrumentation that they have now in terms of real-time uh, data updates of arrival times. They were also doing some additional uh, instrumentation of the bus stops. So they allowed Perkins to leverage some of that um, strategy and process that was underway. So the infrastructure capital from MBTA was critical. And of course, Ray's Lab is a local... Um, product development and systems development company who had the technical expertise and the access to skills around um, the Internet of Things, which is an emergent technology that not many people uh, have the capabilities to deploy. So operating across the sectors, they really were able to bring to bear three different sets of resources. Um, and from a cross-disciplinary point of view, I think we all know that every innovation, especially every social innovation, needs to be not only desirable, to our user base that we're going to offer it to the community, but it needs to be technically feasible. Can this actually work? And it needs to be sustainable and viable. So you do need all three of those points of view. Um, Perkins School for the Blind, in, in this case, was the lead designer because of their embedded access to the community. Um, Ray's Labs was a technical expert lead, and they made sure this was a feasible solution. And the MBATA really was the one who made the entire thing viable and scalable. So in that sense, they were able to bring all these three elements to bear. So at Babson, what we're trying to figure out is how can we uh, create and develop collaborative change makers? People who understand um, and have an opportunity to exercise the importance of creating breakthrough interactions. And so we've created a, a particular initiative called the IoT for Good Social Innovation Lab where we have had an academic joint venture with Babson that's a business school, the Olin College of Engineering, and Massachusetts College of Art and Design. And we asked students to think about, in particular, the Internet of Things as a net technological revolution and how that can address huge uh, impending issues of social impact. So we like to say at Babson that the IoT for Good Lab is where technology, entrepreneurship, design, and social impact meet. 
There are quite a few schools now that, are, um, that have multidisciplinary engineering programs with design and business. We believe we're the first to add social impact, and we're proud of that. So these are some of the projects that have come out of the, social, uh, the IoT for Good lab, uh, where people, as I said, the students are looking in particular at using the IoT technology um, capabilities to address issues of social impact. So they have done things like uh, a band to aid uh, the addiction recovery community, and they have used intriguing technology like geofencing to identify where are places that people may have used before that it alerts their sponsor group when perhaps they're moving back into that area. So really creative things. Um, using uh, wearable devices in students, especially in the, uh, this pr particular program, they were doing it in the elementary school population to try and, try and get a dynamic understanding of what content different, in particular genders, in the elementary school age are reacting to and how we can dynamically update our content to engage students more around STEM. Uh, and then there was a once group that created a platform to allow uh, the system to know who was talking in conversations and their kind of um, passion was around creating conversation equity. So they've really done some interesting things and the, the, the big global goal that we ask them is to use IoT for good to create more inclusive, connected communities. That was a mission that we gave them. Um, and as I said, there are two components that we think are important, not only the cross-disciplinary interactions, but also the cross-sector interactions. And so we've made sure that we've built out an ecosystem that the students are, have the opportunity to see these different partners from the public sector, the private sector, as well as the nonprofit sector, and see how those work together. And they themselves have also engaged on this level. So we're excited about this idea um, of bringing together both cross-disciplinary and cross-sector interactions. And I really just implore you not only now to close your eyes again and think about a big social impact problem, but to think about as you address that social impact problem, how can you come up with creative collaborations? How can you come up with powerful partnerships? How can you come up with diverse teams? And to ask yourself, who needs to be at your table? Thank you.